Hi, my name is Richard Dix, and this is How Did That Happen? A podcast where I look at everyday things or events and try to figure out how they came to be. Every week I will research one topic, and by the end of the episode, I hope to truly have the answer to the question, How Did That Happen? Hello, and welcome to another episode of How Did That Happen? This week we are discussing coffee tables, and I know what you're thinking. Why? Sometimes curiosity just gets the best of you. So come along for a ride this week as I ask, coffee tables, how did that happen? All right, yeah, thanks for coming back for another week um, this week. Before we get into the episode, just uh, do a little intro housekeeping. Uh, we are uh, about to top 900 followers on the Twitter account, and we are over 600 downloads uh, for as far as the, the whole podcast goes, so that's been great. We are really, I know I've been talking about it, um, I actually... I would say by the end of May, because this is May 1st as I'm recording this, by the end of May, we should have a website. And I'm really looking forward to it because there, is, there are some other podcasts that I want to do, but it's like right now, like a little inside baseball stuff, like I'm just on this Spreaker account and I don't really want to add too much more to it if I know I'm about to take it away. Not take it away, but I'm about to switch RSS feeds. And so like I got a couple other podcast ideas and stuff and I just don't want to, I don't want to get too, I don't want to put a bunch of stuff on there that I have to then take off. Um, but, but I really am hoping that by the end of May, we will have a website up and all of that stuff will be there. And I also have so many other things to share with you guys. Uh, so if you, if you could just hang in there with me and keep hearing about how things happen, um, we should be, should be taken off here pretty soon. Uh, but among other things, I have, um, been able to successfully keep all my food inside my stomach for the last few weeks, which has been, if you've been following the podcast is, um, it's a new, it's a new thing for me. Um, uh, going, been going pretty well. I have not I have not been back to Schmanda Excess uh yet and I uh, and I still don't have still still don't have any I don't even think I've had Chinese food since then which is odd for me now that, now that I think about it I haven't been like avoiding it but like you know I'm realizing like subconsciously your brain is just like no dude we're not we're not doing that right now but without further ado we will go ahead and get to this week's episode which is about coffee tables and how they happened in order to track the history of coffee tables, we must look at the evolution of coffee uh, first. But this, this will not be an exhaustive dive into coffee, because that's like a whole other episode, and coffee can get pretty deep. Um, but it will start with the invention of coffee houses, which turned out to be like the turning point as far as like um, congregation and socializing around the actual drink itself. It is, it is these spaces that coffee and the ideas around them truly blossomed. Uh, the first coffee house in the world was in Constantinople, which is common day Istanbul, and it was called Kiva Han. And this coffee was served strong, black, and unfiltered, which is kind of how I think of myself. But um, actually, if you read into different articles, they, a lot of places say they don't know where the first coffee house was. Um, this was the first article that I read that was like, you know, they, they were like, yeah, we know, or at least we're going to lie and act like we know. But all of them do say it basically happened in the, in the Orient area, like it was basically where Istanbul is, and even a little bit further to the left, they say actually some of them I read um, said the first coffee house was in Mecca. So basically it all came from that area. And coffee was so important during these times that there was, there was a law in Turkey that a wife could divorce her husband if she was not supplied with an ample amount of coffee. And I just feel like you could, you could replace coffee for so many things in present day right now, but yeah, that's a pretty interesting. Um, let's see, coffee houses. Coffee houses were common in the Middle East because the Muslim religion does not allow for the consumption of alcohol for most people. So uh, the people needed something to consume and a place to talk about the affairs of the day. And that is what coffee houses really were during that time. They have a lot of instances um, in the early 1500s, in the 1600s, where the leaders, uh, the imams or the, the, the sultans of these respective areas, were actually outlawing coffee houses and the consumption of that because they saw it as a way to basically conspire and, 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 and talk about political things that, you know, that people would then maybe get mad about and then want to like overthrow the elites and stuff like that. So there, there were definitely times um, in the, in the, in, during that time where they just, they were so powerful that they had to be stopped, if you put it, put it that way. Um, let's see, coffee. Coffee comes to Europe, which is basically, I guess you could say that, Basically, when, it, when coffee comes to the West, essentially, that's when it becomes, or that's, that's the basis for what we have now, as far as, like, for anybody in America or in England or, you know, it's anywhere in Europe. It's like, once it, once it got to um, Vienna in uh, the early 1500s, that's when it really became, 
the coffee that we have an idea of tonight because Turkish coffee is still Turkish coffee. It's not, um, it's, it's still pretty strong and pretty black. Um, but let's see. But once it, but once it got to, like I said, Vienna in the 1500s, um, it changed a little bit. So, like I'm saying, during that time, the Turkish army invaded what was then Vienna, Austria. Um, and eventually when the Turks lost and they left, they left behind bags and bags of coffee. Um, and there's a man named Franz, Franz, George, George, Paul Shitsky, who knows. Um, and he claimed the bags and started a coffee house in 1529. Basically, he was one of the few, only people that knew even what he was looking at. He had been to Turkey before, and he was one of the, like I said, one of the few people that knew what, what, the, beans, what the beans could actually do. And so Vienna is also credited with being the first, uh, the first place to put any kind of sugar or cream in the coffee. So he, he, I guess, you know, he had seen the Turkish coffee and knew what, a, you know, and knew how they were doing it, but he kind of changed it up to make it a little more palatable for the people around him. And it took off, and they loved it. And then the first UK coffee house also came by way of Turkey, um, but not in the same way. Basically, there was this guy, an English merchant, who had been dealing in Turkey, or, you know, and, 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 and Turkish uh, trade and stuff like that. And two, two people that worked for him actually just split off from him and started their own business um, making coffee in England. And it was called, the, the, first, um, the first coffee house was called The Turk's Head. And it opened in 1652. Uh, the British called their coffee houses penny universities, which is just, I mean, come on, dude. It's like five syllables. You can't have a nickname that's five syllables uh, because that was the cost of the beverage and because upper class businessmen, they, they drink there. And so basically the idea was that you were a penny, you could walk in there with a really smart upper class gentleman and learn something, I guess, just by you know osmosis or whatever. But in these coffee houses, they would have tall tables to set their cups on, and this is where the original kind of need originated um, for, for for the coffee table, because one would need a place to sit their hot beverage between sips. They were originally called tea tables, and they were sometimes more than two feet tall, which is a little bit taller than the average coffee table today. The average coffee table is about eighteen to nineteen inches. Um, tall and the first tea tables were tall round tables that were set beside a chair or in, were placed in front of a group seating arrangement. The table itself was usually round and could be folded up and put aside until the next tea time. And this is actually this technology, if you will, or the idea of it uh, is actually what turned into the tea trolley, which is a which is still common, I think, today, uh, which is just a table on wheels, kind of like a cart that can be wheeled out, you know, at any time for actual tea time. Coffee tables begin to come into the houses of the social elite in the late 1700s, and I feel like this date is suspect just because they are looking at it from a purely UK standpoint, but we'll go ahead and go with that. Um, there is no mention of an actual coffee table during these times, and that is probably because tea was still more popular. And so the first ones that enter homes were, were made uh, to go behind sofas, so they were tall as well, just, just like we talk, talked about the ones that were in the actual coffee houses, kind of like that thing where you could kind of reach your hand back and, and sit your drink down while sitting on the sofa. Like The idea had not quite come to the front of the sofa yet. In the, in the early 20s, there was a man named J. Stuart Foote uh, from the Imperial Furniture Company who claimed to have invented the first coffee table when he cut the legs off a regular table and saw that it would perfectly fit in front of his sofa. Now, obviously that sounds crazy as far as him being the first guy to just be like, wow, this table, if it was shorter, now we can have coffee on it. But I think when you think about during the time and like how we talked about like the first coffee tables were actually behind the sofas, maybe he didn't, maybe he didn't come up with the idea of cutting the legs off or maybe that was not as, like, you know, inspirational as he thought it would be but the idea to put it in front of your sofa I think was something that was still maybe not commonplace um, and so it, it wasn't until 1938 that we see an actual definition for the coffee table which is uh, defined as a low wide table used before a sofa or a couch and so basically Jay Stewart foot you know he put his foot in that definition and got he basically kind of changed the game I guess in a sense I, I don't know I, I don't know if I fully believe that I mean I think at some point before then they were doing that but I think like what you see, and this is pretty much, um, it's pretty much towards the end of like how coffee tables came to be, as far as like uh, coffee tables, they they they, they, took, they took off in America, and in the middle of the 20th century, with the rise of the single family residence, that is when you kind of start to see it becoming ubiquitous with the idea of being in front of your couch and being something that is like a staple. I know when I got my first place, like the first thing I wanted, well not the first thing, but what really made it feel like a home to me was when I had a place to put a coffee table, you know, and so it's like that idea that. Kind of as we see kind of going from, from, from J. Stewart Foote and, and, and into the definition, into the rise of the single family home and like Eisenhower's nuclear family in the 50s, you know, you start to look at what a house is supposed to be in a house. If you have a living room, it should have sofas. It should also have a coffee table. And that's kind of, I think, where it becomes what we have today. I couldn't really find anything that was like, 
definitively a lineage to say like you know like we could do with like silverwares or like i don't know like other 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 things that like i said had a much more dedicated lineage but this was much more like everyone who was surrounded themselves with this this beverage basically ended up needing something like this and they all kind of made their own version of it and basically and then that's that's pretty much what we have today and that is how coffee tables happened and now it's time for the roundup. The roundup. The roundup. And we're gonna round it up. The first coffee house in the world was in Constantinople in the late 1400s. War between the Turks and Vienna in the early 1500s leads to bags of coffee being left for the people of Vienna as the Turks leave in defeat. They take this and create the first coffee house in Europe. Coffee houses spread throughout Europe, which creates a need for a place to sit those hot beverages. The social elite bring them into their houses in the early 1700s and they fuse with the idea of the tea table. They come over to America with the settlers and get marketed as a house staple during the growth of the single family residence. Things I didn't know before. And now I know them. Never heard of these things. What are they? Uh, so the, the first the first one we have today for the I didn't know before segment is and this this was a doozy um, the coffee house is where the idea of tips came from in the coffee house it was in these coffee houses that there would be a tip jar with a sign on it that said to ensure prompt service T I P S tips basically if you want basically if you want it fast drop a tip in the glass and I just thought that was interesting because I would have never thought I don't even know where tipping came from and they do say that this was the first place that just beyond the idea of it being the, the tips that the idea of, of gratuity um, really came into to play. The idea of let's give a little bit more in addition to paying for whatever it is that we just paid for to ensure better service. Um, I just thought that was interesting as someone who used to work for tips to know the origin. Um, the second one, uh, and this has to do with the Turkish tradition of coffee, and I thought this was kind of interesting. Coffee, coffee was and still is a big deal over there. The pr- prospective brides would sometimes be judged by their coffee making skills. They also would use it as a way to test their new husband or like test their, you know, prospective husband. And so what they would do is they would put salt in the coffee when they made it. And the idea is that the amount of salt correlates to how much they do or don't like the man. You know, you don't like him that much. You put a whole bunch of salt in there. If you like him a lot, you don't put that much salt in there. But conversely, if the woman put a lot of salt in the cup and the man still drank it, it was a testament to his manliness and readiness to marry her, which I just... I, I just when I when I read that I just had this vision of like this guy just like seeing this beautiful girl in a coffee cup full of salt and he's just like you gotta do what you gotta do and he just puts it down and she's like he won't do it he won't do it there's no way he'll get all that salt he just slams the cup down and the same thing she's just like oh my god you know my, my man or something like you know it's it was the 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 mating rituals of 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 any culture are just always interesting to me because I don't know they're just always so different and it's and it's yeah, I mean, when I read this, I was like, so, so really, she's like testing her dude, like, I'm a, how much salt can this man take? Or, or she's like, well, I really like him a lot, and I know he's a softy. I know he can't take it. I'm just gonna put a couple little pinches of there because I love him so much. It's such an odd, um, yeah. I mean, I just not. I'm not trying to judge, but I definitely did not know that before. All right, that's been another episode of How Did That Happen talked about coffee tables this time we talked about what uh was it bottled water the last time no cotton candy the last last thing we talked about um i don't know why i brought that up but it's been a good episode i wish there was more i'm sure there's more but it's like it it becomes one of those things when you look at it they just a lot of the same articles just keep saying the same things and what i noticed and maybe there's a niche for this for me to come back and maybe do it more later which i'm thinking about doing some of these anyways once i get i don't know like 30 40 maybe 50 50 episodes in and I've gotten better, which I'm way better at it than anybody has been watching than I was 20 plus episodes ago. Maybe go back and revamp some of, some of these episodes and put some more information into it. This could be a perfect uh, candidate for that. But as it stands right now, that's about the best we could find for how coffee tables happen. Uh, like I said, I appreciate you guys always pressing play and anybody that keeps coming back uh, week to week. I am your host, Richard Dix. Uh, be sure to like, rate, and subscribe wherever you can. Leave a comment if you can. Uh, we'll see you guys next week.